Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Public Improvement Commission hearing of August 29th, 2019. Our first item are the hearing minutes. At the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on August 8th, 2019. Any questions or comments about the hearing minutes? I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to the utility poll hearing on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. to relocate one utility pole within Magnolia Street, a public way in Dorchester, to be located on its northwesterly side at address numbers 187 189, generally northeast of Quincy Street. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bill Wallace, representing Verizon on this petition. The petition is to relocate an existing pole about eight feet uh, from off the corner of the street to allow better access to the handicap ramp that is right there. Um, that's pretty much the reason for it, pretty straightforward. Is it a joint owned pole? Or Ye is yes, it is. Okay. Yes, I'm Chanel Grant from Eversource Energy. So both of you are joint owned. Yes. Yep. And the property owner is where? I'm sorry. The 187 Magnolia Street is where? Right on the one, right on the corner. Right, they're aware of the move. Yes. Right. Dorchester. Yeah. All right. Other questions or comments? Any your time? Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. I make a motion by joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. to relocate one utility pool. Within Magnolia Street, Dorchester to be located in its northwesterly side at address number 187, 189, generally northeast of Quincy Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving on to our public hearing, our first item is on a joint petition by Fenway Center owner 1 2 LLC, BCH 819 Beacon Street LLC, and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines of Beacon Street, a public way, and Boston proper located on its southerly side, generally at address numbers 771-775 and 819-825 East and West of Maitland Street. This was new business on August 8th, 2019, and this says shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan 819, 771, and 775 Beacon Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated July 22nd, 2019. Good morning, Commissioners. This is Kevin Wright from VHB. I'm here with Kevin Daly, um, representing uh, the ownership team. I'm also, we have uh, with us in uh, the crowd, uh, Mark Boyle from Mass DLT and Bob Bailey uh, from Children's Hospital, um, and Mark Youngins from VHB as well. Um, we are here to present the widening and relocation uh, for the Beacon Street, Maitland, and Mountford intersection. As we stated at the new business here, and this is uh, in order to install new signals uh, at the intersection um, that we've coordinated the last year with BTD. Uh, we've recently uh, got the approvals through PSE and even uh, a resubmittal, which I can talk about later, uh, that was recently approved uh, regarding the location of the cabinet. Uh, the widening relocation is needed because uh, we have to install uh, pedestrian uh, traffic post uh, as well as a mast arm uh, on the location uh, for the signals due to the fact that we have underground vaults and bridge supports in the location. Uh, which I have highlighted here so that you can see the limit uh, on the plan, some is under the sidewalk, under the street, so that's why we have uh, positioned these traffic signal posts, posts in the location um, that, that has been shown. We've done the necessary coordination with uh, agencies um, and gotten, uh, since the last time, responses from the BPDA as well with our approval to move forward with this, uh, this project. Uh, as a piece of coordination from our time last week, we've, we've uh, received plans from uh, the Boston Water and Sewer Commission highlighting uh, some utilities that were in the area, which we'll uh, correct on the plan and, and get back to uh, Commissioner Devlin. We've also, as I alluded to in the introduction, 
uh, per the request of Commissioner Hesford, we relocated the traffic control box uh, from its location, which was located here. And we've now coordinated with Don Burgess in the engineering department to put it on the northeast corner uh, of the intersection. We've also coordinated with um, the Disabilities Commission per, per uh, their request last week to send a variance uh, um, to their department. They reviewed it. They've asked us to coordinate with the AAB. We have done that. The AAB has suggested that because of uh, the change in use that we file an amendment, which we will uh, do their meeting on September 9th and, and um, have asked us to get information to them by next week early uh, Monday to, in order to make that, that time frame. Um, and that's just to amend the, the use of the ramp because of the, the crossing. Before we go to the other specific repairs, just on the, the current widening and relocation yep. uh, action, any questions or comments about the widening and relocation? Amy or Todd? Okay. All right, members of the public. Kevin, anything else you want to cover on the widening and relocation? No. All right, we'll entertain a motion on that, on that item then. Make a motion to approve the joint petition by Fenway Center owner one and two LLC, BCH 819 Beacon Street LLC, and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines as read into the record by the chair, and as shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan 819 771 775 Beacon Street Boston proper one sheet dated July 22nd, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. We're going to our next item on a petition by Fenway Center owner 1-2 LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps and traffic signal infrastructure. Locations are Beacon Street, generally at address number 775 and 819 in Maitland Street, and Maitland Street at Beacon Street. This was new business on August 8th, and this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 771 and 775 Beacon Street, Boston Proper, one sheet day, July 2nd, 2019. Thank you. Um, as I've kind of blurred the line a little, but <laughs> uh, this is for the specific repairs, uh, also for the uh, traffic signal installation. Uh, a lot of the comments that we received uh, at the new business hearing, which uh, were related to this, we've uh, addressed. And as I was uh, alluding to, we are working with the AB uh, on this location. As you, as you currently see, the, this current ramp is built in its uh, current location. It had a variance, and we're tying into this location, uh, making it an apex. Um, that's due to the fact that, again, we have the vaults underground, and we can't locate uh, equipment, pedestrian push buttons and those necessary things in those appropriate locations, and this is the ideal location for that uh, as reviewed and determined with, uh, with BTD. We've also uh, verified per the request of the commission to go out and look at the condition of the uh, existing ramp, and it's in its current condition, it's still uh, good. We've committed to uh, the Disabilities Commission that we will maintain uh, and, and, and review that uh, ramp as construction goes on, and if it uh, is damaged in any way, we'll, we'll repair it uh, accordingly. When I do the construction, who will do the construction? Have you settled things with MBTA for all the permits you need? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. we already have engaged as part of the construction project with John Moriarty out there, so we've got that work ready to go. Actually, okay. we, intend to, we intend to do it later this fall. Waiting for sort of right now. Yeah. 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 Amy, the retaining wall that is close by, to whom does it belong to? It holds the tracks. Which retaining wall? It's the retaining the wall. It's best not. Okay, so as long as you have clearance from the state for both the preservation of the retaining Yes, the whole wall, the whole project's wall. gone through review okay. with MassDOT, and the construction of the new buildings as well as this. So. We, we meet with them on a weekly basis and go through any issues that pertain, but they, they're, they're, they're in support of it. Mark, you got a Just a comment, this is Kevin, and you can back to the contractor. Uh, the crosswalks at Maitland and Ortiz, and Ortiz and the uh, commuter rail, they could freshen those uh, crosswalks up. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Other questions or comments on specific, specific repairs? Members of the public, Kevin, anything else you want to cover? 
No, we just coordinated the agreements with Chong, and uh, we're, we'll finalize once that once we get through this. Okay. All right. I'll a motion for I make a motion to approve on a petition by Fenway Center owner, 1-2 LLC, for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps and traffic signal infrastructure, Beacon Street and Maitland Street. As shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 771 to 775 Beacon Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated July 2nd, 2019. Second. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by 189 Ipswich Street Realty Trust for the making of specific repairs within Ipswich, Ipswich Street in Boston proper, located on its southwesterly side, at address number 189, southeast of Van Ness Street, and consisting of reconstructed sidewalks and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on August 8, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan. 189 Ipswich Street, Fenway, one sheet day, July 19th, 2019. Hi, good morning. I'm Brian Fairbanks with VHB, and I have here with me Kathleen Brill from Foley Hoag and Michael Lamphere with Jones Lang LaSalle. We're here representing the Red Sox for the 189 Ipswich Street lot. In this case, the specific repair for a widening of the sidewalk of existing curb cut on Ipswich Street. And I do not believe anything has changed on the plan since the last time we met in front of you on August 8th, other than um, Kathleen will describe some things relative to the signatures. Oh, yes, uh, we're asking for the PIC's approval contingent on their receipt of the ori original signatures on the petitions for both this matter and the following matter on the agenda, which have been delayed due to the travel schedules of ownership. Yeah, we have it. We have a PIC. Yeah. Still anything about that based yeah. on that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and can you just walk us through, again, sort of the intent of what's driving this proposal to build this out and what the actual shift in the driveway uh, is? Sure. So today there's an existing about 21 foot wide driveway on Ipswich Street that leads to a parking lot and we are asking uh, to widen it to be a 30 foot wide driveway curb cut opening and this is in order to facilitate broadcast trucks for the Boston Red Sox that will be using the parking lot in the future. And to confirm, so these trucks that we load in well before the a series load out well after. Correct. They show up normally several hours before the game and they leave several hours after and they are normally there the entire time during a homestand. And the resulting sidewalk condition is, sort of, is a 11, 11 feet wide sort of clutch sidewalk condition. Correct. Where the, the concrete and the pedestrian path you know prevails over the roadway. And there's a significant grade change right between Van Ness and the parking lot? There is today, so we will be raising the grade of the of the lot to make it um, much less drastic than it is today. So today, between the you know the Ipswich Street curb cut down and you know it, it drops three you know three to five feet into the center of the lot, where we will be raising the entire lot and installing a retaining wall to flatten the lot out as much as possible, and that that's required because of the broadcast trucks operations. These large trucks need to sit as flat as possible. And so the retaining wall between Van Ness and the lot is your, will be the retaining wall, that's your retaining wall that you'll be building? No, so the, there will be, there's an existing retaining wall today between Van Ness and the lot. That will be being filled in to meet the, we're basically going to try to, you know, we're going to be matching the grade as close as possible to Van Ness. There will be another, we will be constructing a new retaining wall on the, the south side of the lot. Uh, basically, the broadcast operations and the existing retail businesses that are there today, the CBS and Tony C. Is. But to follow up on the chair's point, that retaining board will be on your private property. Correct. <coughs> so, this project is a result of a build out within the triangle lot for the performance art, uh, center. Uh, that's why this is getting shifted here. 
initially we, we had uh, some initial discussions relative to obviously through the public process about uh, adding additional B BTD resources mm -hmm. the MOU with the Red Sox on that. Uh, we've had several meetings, have not heard back from ownership yet okay. on that. Could you please bring that message back? That needs yep. to come back to us. Yes. Okay. Specifically, they want to reach out to either Brad uh, Garrett or Tom McKay. Or myself. Other questions or comments on this physical course? Okay. I'll entertain a motion on this item, uh, again, contingent upon receipt of the uh, signatures. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by 189 Ipswich Street, Realty Trust, for the making of specific repairs within Ipswich Street, Boston proper, as written in the record by the chair, and as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repair plan, 189 Ipswich Street, Fenway, one sheet dated July 19, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by 189 Ipswich Street Realty Trust and Old Town uh, Team Realty Trust for the granting of a private utility license for the installation of a new subsurface private telecommunication infrastructure within Van Ness Street, Boston proper, located generally southwest of Ipswich Street. This was new business on August 8th, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan Van Ness Street 189 Ipswich Street Fenway One Sheet Day July 19, 2019. And again, I'm Brian Fairbanks with VHB, and I have Kathleen Brill with Foley Hoag and Michael Lamphere with Jones Lang LaSalle here representing the Red Sox. Uh, we're here for a license plan for a private utility crossing of Van Ness Street that we will be bringing telecommunications only for broadcast operations between the trucks that will be parked on the 189 Ipswich Street lot and conduit that needs to go into Fenway Park. Um, since we met on August 9th, um, the, we were asked by PIC staff to add a, two plaques on either side of Van Ness Street that indicate that there's a private utility crossing below. Uh, so we have placed those on the back of the curb um, on the sidewalk where, where, you know, on the south and north side of Van Ness Street, indicating it was a private utility crossing. Jim, do they need to be registered with DigSafe now? I'm on the point, are you registered? Tested concrete. Yeah, no, yeah, I believe it's registered through our cable office, which usually I think has a, but we can, we can double check. I, I think that there is. Sam, can you feel good about so that you're swooping beneath the, uh, the gas infrastructure above the water and sewer infrastructure? Yeah. yeah. Van Ness has some large public utilities within it, and it also has some private utilities. So we are gonna have to go, up, you know, up and over certain ones. So this is going to take a little bit of time mm -hmm. because you may not know the exact elevations yeah. of the gas line or if the gas line needs to settle, correct? And and, and so many things. So uh, for that duration of construction, Van Ness might be out of circulation. You have given consideration to all parties that are going to be impacted by that? I know that we have coordinated with the private utility companies, but yeah, we will certainly take that into consideration. So if there should be any secondary settlements on other utilities, you will be responsible for remediating all those issues? Correct. Other questions or comments on the private utility license? All right, Amir Todd. Members of the public. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve on a joint petition by 189 Ipswich Street Realty Trust and Old Town Team Realty Trust for the granting of a private utility license 
for the installation of new subsurface private telecommunications infrastructure within Van Ness Street is read into the record by the chair as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan Van Ness Street 189 Ipswich Street Fenway 1 Street dated July 19, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by uh, trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs within Commonwealth Avenue, Boston proper. Located on its northerly side at address number 855, generally east of Buick Street, and consisting of a new campus wayfinding placemaking sign. This was new business on August 8th, and this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Austin Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, 855 Commonwealth Avenue, Boston, one sheet, uh, dated August 2019. Morning, Good morning, I'm Paul Rinaldi from Boston University, and I'm here with Chelsea Christensen of Niche Engineering. Um, 855 Commonwealth Avenue was built 100 years ago as a showroom for, the, for uh, Buick motor cars. For some reason in 1970-75, uh, the university decided to fill in the beautiful showroom windows, and here we are in 2019, uh, we're planning to open them up again. Uh, the project has three elements. Uh, the first is to improve handicap accessibility. Right now, the primary accessibility path is on a side door. And with this renovation, we're calling more attention to this with a new plaza, a new entry, so that the side door becomes the front door. Uh, that is the reason for the uh, specific repair, installing a standard university sign in the plant in bed along Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, other components of the project are a major restoration of the limestone facade and uh, uh, bringing back the uh, showroom windows in a contemporary version. Chelsea, would you speak to the specific repair, please? Hi, Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering. The um, specific repair for the sign is uh, the sign is to be located in the planter. This area is currently under construction as part of the CAP 2A project, and so the plant, the Site furnishings haven't been fully installed yet, but this, as uh, is shown in the image here, it would be in the planter behind, between the benches and the roadway. The sign's about um, five foot, nine inches high, a foot and a half wide, and six inches thick. Quick question on the specific repairs, separate from the sign. You mentioned both the sign and sort of an, adjust, uh, an adjustment for accessibility. I see the... Uh, the accessibility is all occurring inside. All, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Right. Well, and on private sidewalk. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, it's, so the, this repair action is specific to the sign. It's really just the sign. Yeah. I mean, the, the challenge is the building's right on the property line, on the sidewalk, and as we are moving the primary entrance from the middle, where we did have a sign, <coughs> we're sliding it to the west. So the best place to identify the main entrance is with the sign that's in this planting pad. Maybe if this can be done, otherwise, no foul. So BU has a maintenance agreement with the city. Yeah, so I asked if they were going to have more wayfinding signage. Typically, their wayfinding signage is actually on their private yeah. property. So if this was going to come up a lot, we would just kind of bundle it all together. But I feel like this is going to be pretty neat. And even when that happens, because they do have an agreement with us from Kenmore Square to the BU Bridge. Now, from BU Bridge to Packard's Corner, I don't know the status of it. In terms of the maintenance agreement, whether you have lumped that with the old one, it's not because right. they're so, getting to mixed ownership. Up until Packard's Corner, it's almost exclusively, exclusively them, there. and then we start to we get. So if you can uh, synthesize all of it, because in years to come, we may forget who owns well, other than. Well, cross reference all the time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to reiterate. I think I asked a question last week. The plan shows one thing. The rendering shows the other. You're in the planter, but on the planet, it looks like it's sitting in the middle of a forest of trees. That's not happening, right? It's not happening. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, other questions or comments about the sign? Where do I find the sign? Maybe your time. Members of the public. All right. Entertain a motion on the sign. Make a motion to approve on a petition by trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs within Commonwealth Avenue, Boston proper, as read into the record by the chair on 855 Commonwealth Avenue, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, 855 Commonwealth Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated August 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by the trustees of Boston University for the granting of a projection license for the installation of canopies and lighting fixtures over portions of Commonwealth Avenue in Boston proper. Located on the northerly side at address number 855, generally east of Buick Street. This was new business on August 8, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan 855 Commonwealth Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated August 2019. Paul Rinaldi from Boston University. <clears throat> so there are two components of the projection license. The first is the lighting. And as you see in the lower left hand corner, uh, circa 1935, I think. Uh, the projection license on the lighting is kind of, we're in a catch-up mode. Um, <clears throat> restoring the, uh, uh, the windows, the showroom uh, windows, is a contemporary version of what was there. We work closely with the BPDA to give some character to it rather than just the, the old kind of auto style. Um, so it's a very shallow and, and modest uh, extension over the public way. Chelsea. Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering. The um, request is for the projection of the existing lights as well as a sunscreen to be located um, about nine inches extending into the sidewalk. The, both the, the sunscreen and the lights are about 11 feet above the sidewalk, plus or minus as the sidewalk grade varies slightly along the building. The sunscreen itself is, as I said, nine inches over the sidewalk and about 18 feet long above each of the windows. And then the existing lights extend about uh, 25 inches over the public sidewalk. Questions and comments on this? Amir Top? Okay. Members of the public? Thank you guys for making this investment to really improve this corner. Appreciate Thanks for your cooperation on it. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Petition by trustees of Boston University for the granting of a projection license for the installation of um, canopies and lighting fixtures over portions of Commonwealth Ave, Boston proper, located on its northerly nord side at address um, number 855, generally east of Buick Street, as shown in plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan 855 Com Ave, Boston, one sheet dated August 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. The next item is on a petition by Allstate Road Edens LLC for the making of specific repairs within Jan Karski Way in Dorchester, located on its northwesterly side at address number 25, generally at District Avenue and consisting of relocated street trees as well as the removal of specialty pavement. This was new business on August 8, 2019, and this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, 25 Jan Karski Way, one sheet day, July 24, 2019. Good morning, I'm Steve Moderano of Bowler Engineering. Uh, here with me to my right is Kevin Erickson, who's with the 110 Grill, uh, the applicant for the cafe license, and then Will Stanwick, who's with Edens, who's the owner of the Salt Bay property. Uh, we were here uh, three, three weeks ago now um, to, for new business for the project, so just quick overview. The Salt Bay project is, is about five city blocks that were created out of some abandoned properties. Uh, it included creation of some new public and private ways throughout the parcel. Uh, Jankarski Way was the public way that was created and um, this uh, application here today is obviously on the public way portion of the project. Um, when we were here last time, we discussed a couple of items that we promised. One was a rendering, so we now have uh, a rendering of, and this is a, a real live photo of today conditions with the uh, cafe license superimposed, or the cafe uh, proposal superimposed onto the, the existing conditions. Um, so that is a representative image of the fence that we're proposing around, uh, around the cafe. Uh, the other thing we heard was uh, just to look back and see what the project did relative to pedestrian studies and really to ensure that the sidewalks were going to operate as intended even with the cafe in place. Um, so I'll, I'll just jump right in. So uh, the first action is uh, specific repairs and the specific repairs are really 
to, to ensure that when the cafe is in place, we still have complete streets um, elements in place as well as ensure the uh, sidewalk still appropriate, uh, appropriately functions and has the accessibility that, that we've uh, set out as guidelines for the entire South Bay project. So the cafe uh, is on the corner here, which Jane Karski is the public way uh, going up the page into the middle of the South Bay development. That's a private way called District Avenue. Um, so a portion of the patio is in the public way and a portion is in the private way. Uh, so we'll focus obviously on the, on the public way. Um, the improvements are really relocation of one street tree. So there was a street tree and we worked with the Parks Department to find an alternative location, which is really still on Jankarski Way, just on the opposite side of District Avenue. It just moves to the other side of the intersection. And then the, there was a, the paver strip was proposed and we've, we've pulled the paver strip back to the next uh, tree pit just to make sure it has uh, the appropriate look for the area and uh, makes, uh, ensures we have the five foot width when the, side, when the cafe is in place. Uh, so that's the extent of the, the specific repairs. Uh, we do have five foot clear sidewalks uh, even with the cafe in place, and, and we can talk about that with the cafe license and the pedestrian studies, but so the specific repairs of the tree relocation and the paver change back to cement concrete. Questions and comments on those two specific elements? So you did say that you did some analysis on the pedestrian level of service? Yes. Did you hear what the result was? Sure. sure. I didn't know if that was part of the cafe license or this, but uh, the result is a level of service A. Uh, from the pedestrian, even with the five-foot sidewalk. With the cafe in place, it'll be a level of service. Can you just forward me that analysis when you get a we chance? Can't. I have copies here if Perfect. you'd like right now. Um, I'll, 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 I'll turn them into staff. Other questions or comments on this particular first? Maybe you're talking? Yes, Members of the public? All right. I'll attend a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve on a petition by All State Road LLC for the making of specific repairs within Jankowski Way, Dorchester, as read into the record by the chair, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan 25 Jankowski Way, one sheet dated July 24, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. We're on to our next item on a joint petition by Allstate Road Edens LLC and 110 Grill South Boston LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within Jan Karski Way, Dorchester, located on its uh, northwesterly side at address number 25, northeast of District Avenue, and consisting of seating for 44 persons total and approximately 319 square feet within the public way. This was new business on August 8, 2019, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe Plan 25 Jan Karski Way, one sheet, dated July 24th, 2019. Very good, thank you. Again, Steve Matarano, Polar Engineering. Um, so the Sidewalk Cafe is obviously located on Jan Karski Way at District Avenue on the corner there. The sidewalk widths vary through there um, with a minimum width today of eight feet clear um, within the right of way. Uh, and this cafe is approximately 10 and a half feet in width. Uh, in that section of sidewalk, there, there is a bump out and the effective sidewalk width will be five foot minimum through there, five foot clear with no obstructions. So there's adequate room and as we just mentioned, the uh, level of service is still A for the pedestrian experience through that stretch and that factors in the full build, not, not current conditions, but once the, the full development's occupied uh, is how the analysis was done. Um, other than that, that, I mean, that is really the, the, the crux of it. The, we, we heard the dimensions and, and the seating capacity uh, in the announcement, but happy to answer any other questions about uh, the operations, and we have a representative from 110 Grill if you have any questions about uh, operations. Are all entrances and access to the cafe from within the restaurant? Pr the primary, primary access is there. through the restaurant. There is an emergency, emergency. gate. You can see it. Oh. Right there. That 
is, that is not for daily use. That's just an emergency egress from the patio. And you know, if as part of the development or other sidewalk cafes that are proposed for along Jankarski Way, or is this the sole? At, at the moment, this is the sole one. It, it really doesn't set up for a lot more sidewalk cafes. There's more on District Avenue, which would be in the private ways. Um, but right now, there's no other tenants. Uh, there's no other retail That's tenants that are even on Jankarski Way. Yeah. I'm not 100% certain if the railing system that defines the cafe uh, is consistent with prior or current guidelines. Yeah, no, it, it, it just needs to be fixed, um, and then the, uh, we have the... What about the railings? So, so, well, yeah, so you can see, you, it's just hard to see in the rendering. There are, you can see lines that go across. Uh, okay. that will detect as the long as it is. Yeah. The details on that tiny little yeah, space. No, it, it's, it's tough to see. They're there, um, and they go all the way down. So there's these pieces. Yes. And that design will be likely consistent with other things that would come on District Avenue. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the theme. They they don't want to you know force everyone to use the exact same railing, but they're trying to set the theme of this is what this is what we'd like to see, and and you'll see some other versions of this on District Avenue, but that's really their. They're trying to set the theme and keep it, uh, and then and then Edens has final review over any tenants' fences, um, so there there is some ownership. Uh, obviously, they're trying to create a, an environment there, and they want to make sure that everything visible to the public meets their vision. And this rendering was actually done by Edens internal staff, so they're they're the ones really taking full design control over what Salt Bay looks like. Other questions or comments on the sidewalk cafe lists? Any your top? Okay. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve on a joint petition by Allstate Road LLC and 110 Grill SB Boston LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license within Jankowski Way as read into the record by the chair as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe Plan 25 Jankowski Way, one sheet dated July 24, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you much. Moving on to our next item, on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within the following public ways in Charlestown, <laughs> 3rd Avenue between 13th Street and 16th Street, 13th Street at 3rd Avenue, 16th Street at 3rd Avenue. This was new business on August 8, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Crown Castle, 16th Street, 3rd Avenue, one sheet dated August 2019. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Shelley Cullen, uh, representing Crown Castle. And John Barry, Access Engineering. So, yes, so we did put this out to participants and there was no interest. Um, we have about 500 feet, and this is feeding uh, to feed a node on an existing streetlight. How many conduits are you putting, Shelly? Um, they're, they're putting in total eight inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, so four for city shadow. And uh, two quad fours. Two mm -hmm. quad fours. Correct. 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 For you, how many? No, one for the city, one quad for the city and one for Crown Castle. That's it? Correct. That's it. Yes. And there is a uh, three by three manhole here and it's, uh, we've kept it outside of the crosswalk. So I can, let me show you that. You, have, you already have approval from street lighting? Yes, we had everything I brought in last time. Thank you. All right, your time? All right members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on petition by Crown Castle Fiber to grant a location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit and city shadow within the following public ways in Charlestown, as read in the record by the chair and as shown on this plan entitled. City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, rental location, Crown Castle, 16th Street, 3rd Ave, one sheet dated August 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within the following public ways in South Boston. It goes 7th Street from D Street to a point northwest of C Street and Joyce Hayes Way and D Street at West 7th Street. This was new business on August 8th, 2019, and this says shown on a set of plans entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, West 7th Street, South Boston, four sheets dated August 2019. Good morning again, Shelley Cullen. And John, and John Barry. Barry. Um, yeah, so this is the same situation. Um, we put out for lead company, no participants. They're putting in a quad for themselves and a quad for the uh, for city shadow and um, we did make a lot of changes to um, to this um, John actually was working a lot with uh, Denise Devlin this week because there's a new sewer coming in and so we moved the trench line to accommodate that so there wouldn't be a conflict How long is the, hot? the entire dig is uh, 623 623 feet but Denise is coming up Yeah, and the only other, um, and we talked earlier um, today, the only other change we made was just to keep it um, on the detail sheet, you showed 12 inch separation right. between mm -hmm. the uh, utilities. We can just show an 18, 18. inch separation yep. between the utilities. Mm -hmm. And on top of um, the other comments that Amy made uh, to just coordinate with us while completing the work. Absolutely. Yes. This is the underground. I use the word underground district with some definition, but with some looseness also. Yes. This is underground, right? Yeah. Correct. All South Boston, oh. except for Lake No participants. No participants. He's all here. She's dressed. Oh, yes, yeah, and I just want to say thank you. Um, I know that th this had to come up um, after new business, so I just want to say, you know, um, thank you for um, taking, care taking care of those changes that we have requested, and yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you're welcome. Other questions or comments? Give me your time. Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on the side. I make a motion to approve petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of loca location with um, Lead company status and no participant to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in South Boston as read by the chair. As shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, West 7th Street, South Boston, four sheets dated August 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank so you. Moved. Thank Excellent. You. Thanks. Moving on to our next item on a petition by At the Stony Brook LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in West Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement street trees and driveway curb cuts. The locations are Washington Street on its northwesterly side at address number 3193, northeast of Montebello Road, and Montebello Road on its northerly side, northwest of Washington Street. This was new business on August 8, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan, on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, 3193 Washington Street, Montebello Road, Jamaica Plan, two sheets in June 29th, 2019. Hello, Steve Sawyer with Design Consultants Inc. Um, so the, we did remove the bump out on Montebello and as part of maintaining uh, a five foot width on Montebello uh, where the building's pulled two feet back, so we maintain two feet, or uh, it's just about two feet of sidewalk in front of the new building. So, uh, as coordinated with PIC, we're asking that this be can uh, actually with that it's going to require an easement. We thought we'd have that easement plan today. Uh, we didn't. We didn't get that. So, we're required to continue this matter. I think to September 26. And then we could, the easement be on the new business at the next meeting, then they'd both finish up together on the 26th. To make sure we have the uh, correct plans, this is 
I'm not reflecting. Yeah, so we're, yeah. Uh, the next the next round or next hearing, you'll see the easement, and then we'll have all new specific repairs that reflect both the easement and the new specific yeah. repairs. Uh, we, want, we want to get a full from the same way. Any east is north of Forest Hills or south of Forest Hills on Washington Street? North. north. What's it? The, uh, Your project, is it north of uh, it's Forest south. Hills? It's south. It's it's south. Forest Hills? It's north of Forest Hills. <laughs> or, or actually, it's, we're on the north of Washington Street. We're, we're on south of Eggleston. Yeah, south of Eggleston. Got it. Okay, okay so north yeah, north it's of not Washington. on the bus lane path, uh, but correct. It is between. It's on, there's a bus that goes there. It's not the bus and the bus like portion. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's all good. That's why we're coming back to Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. You guys are those. Uh, yeah. We're seeing a motion to yeah, continue so this, performance. Actually, if, if you look at this plan, this is the, uh, kind of, we're just maintaining that radius. Actually, we're providing two ramps at that corner uh, as requested. So you're asking for a continuance? Yes. Yeah, yes. continuance to the 26. Okay. Uh, other questions or comments? Mayor Todd, members of the public. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item for four weeks to September 26th. Make a motion to continue. Second. All, uh, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. So moved. Thank you. See you in four weeks. Oh, yeah. see you in and two and weeks also the new business. business. Yeah, this, the new business I'm asking to continue in uh, two five. weeks out. We'll see. So that will be done. That's automatic. Oh, it's automatic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two, two weeks for the easement and then four weeks on this item. All right. Moving on to our next item on a set of joint petitions by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, groundwater recharge infrastructure driveway curb cuts, and a silver cell groundwater retention and tree root protection system. Locations are Stewart Street on its southerly side and address numbers 212-222 uh, east of Church Street. Church Street between Stewart Street and Shaman Street. Shaman Street on its northerly side between Church Street and Coconut Grove Lane. Uh, the, the, this was new business on August 8th, 2019. And it says shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Specific repairs plan, 212 Stewart Street, Boston, six sheets dated December 2018. Good morning, Chris Adia with Niche Engineering, here with uh, Peter Spelios um, of Stewart Street Acquisition and Paula Devereaux. Um, so we're here for specific repairs on uh, Church Street, Stewart Street, and Shamit Street. Um, so we've got the rendering of the building here, the proposed building, 19-story residential, um, small retail component on the first floor, 126 units. Um, so, kind of like last time, we'll just walk around the building, starting on Sewer Street. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Is this a new 19-story building, yes? New or is it? Story building. And do you have a picture of the new 19-story? Did I miss that? Yeah. Which one? That one. I'm just going to give a, a quick overview of the use of the, of the new building. So it's currently... Um, uh, uh, if you can, just, just for the context of this public area. Yeah, so it's um, uh, currently it's a parking lot, um, and it's been a vacant building for a long time. Um, and it was prior, many years ago, a building that was burned out, and ISD was ordered, uh, ordered to take it down. So it's been vacant for a number of years. Um, the... Uh, we went through the process with both the BPDA under Article 80 and the Zoning Board of Appeals um, to construct a new building. There was a very robust community process with Bay Village um, because um, this is seen by the residents of Bay Village as sort of the entrance way into Bay Village. Um, Bay Village did, um, they did agree with the project um, and um, so here we are. <coughs> It's a very narrow site, um, yeah. and it's not a very big site. So, um, but I think there's construction. It's going to be interesting. 
Right. <laughs> right. So we just uh, walked through the specific repairs starting on Stewart Street. Uh, so you basically have a uh, new concrete sidewalk along the length of the building um, and then across the Church Street itself. Um, there's going to be a permanent strip with new trees, uh, with silver cells, uh, with planting material for the trees in them uh, along the curb line. Uh, the curb line is going to stay approximately the same in front of the building and then there is a slight bump out to where just to clean up the existing bump out that's there today. Um, we'll bring it out there and then we'll follow the existing curb line there also. Um, new pedestrian ramp to go across the other side of Stewart Street uh, in approximately the same location, but since we're bumping it out a little bit, we're reconstructing that. Um, so, yeah, six new trees. Um, and we're just removing and resetting the street lights. So, the unsafe parking regulations for that area. Are you going to have managed parking, no parking? What's, this, what's the story? There's no parking with the building. There's no, um, there's a lease agreement in, in place with the parking garage that's next door, that's w with the hotel, and uh, residential parking will be there. And there's, is there anyone on street parking? There's no on street parking. There's no on street parking, no, on street parking <laughs> right. no loading, nothing. Correct. That occurs in the back, correct? Well, there'll be loading that comes off of Stewart Street. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's a big curb cut on this end for loading over here on Stewart Street. So what, what occurs on the back side? Um, it's um, residential on the back side. Um, one of the um, uh, neighborhood requests was that the back of the building be residential and reflect the existing residential look of uh, Bay Village. Shaman Street side has sort of the guys press on. Yeah, yeah that's the Shaman Street this side. Is the Street side so we have, um, sorry, four parking spaces in the front. And they're all going to be resident parking? Yeah, it's existing Bay Village resident parking. So it's being programmed for resident parking. I just want to verify. Yeah, just, Bay just the rear. Because yeah. <clears throat> yeah. there was some other discussion, and I guess that dropped off. Um, on the Stewart Street side, I know we've seen some solar cell systems before, but can you just talk to us briefly about the utility of the solar cell system uh, for street trees? Yeah, so basically the solar cell system, it's a manufactured product, large concrete, basically tub for it, um, has uh, planting soil in it, gives the trees a better chance of surviving in the harsh winters of Boston, basically. Um, yeah. Slightly larger than the tree pit. With Slightly the larger than the tree pit, it sends a little bit underneath the actual concrete side on itself. Even they are taking the full sidewalk with the maintenance agreement, the full sidewalk? Yes. Yeah, and I think that we are at a point where we need to have a conversation with Parks about silver cells and kind of a larger conversation because I, I think we had a few of them, but now I feel like we have a little bit more trouble. Right. Yeah. So just, just for your edification, what I meant is here the maintenance yes. agreement will require for you to have the control side, the full length of the sidewalk, not just the length of yep. the tree yep. and the tree support system. We understand. Yep. Any questions on the Stewart Street side? Um, yeah, actually, um, oh, excuse me, it's not. It's on the uh, Shawmut Street side. I had questions on, but that's, yeah, I was jumping ahead a little. Oh, no, that's good. If you're going to Shawmut, we can go there. We can, yeah. yeah, so we can off the Shawmut. Too much tea this morning, so. All right. Well, I'll move on to Church Street This is Church Street, runs uh, north-south between Shaman Street and Shaman Street itself. Um, Church Street is primarily a pedestrian street, um, and that's where it's going to be maintained that way. Uh, there will be the emergency access for emergency vehicles only. Uh, we're maintaining a 20-foot width for that. Um, similar treatment as uh, Stewart Street, we're going to have a concrete sidewalk along this side, along the building side, um, which will then connect to the concrete sidewalk on Shaman. There will be pedestrian and vehicular papers in Church Street itself. Um, just to give it a better look, and then we're rendering that I can show that after we walk through all this. Um, there will be four new trees along the east side, the building side. Um, there are two trees on the other side that the Parks Department would like us to keep, and so we're going to keep them. So we've modified the design since last time uh, to reflect that. Uh, and there are 
few gas street lights, which will just be relocating to better fit with the trees. That segment of Church Street, where you classify as a pedestrian street, there is still vehicle circulation through there, or is fire. there? Yeah. Just a fire lane. Yeah, we have a fire truck that. Do we have a curb preview over there? Yes. Um, so you jump the curb, yeah. go through. Do you have any service vehicles going through that area to support your building in terms of loading, unloading, trash nope. pickup? Nothing? Nothing. I believe the construction manor plan has been signed off after a lot of negotiation. I appreciate your uh, patience on that. Uh, the TAFA agreement, has that been signed yeah, off? Yeah, that's been signed that's off. That's been that's signed yeah. off. Okay. Yeah. Good. Do you have a rendering of church? Sorry? Do you have a rendering of church? Yes. So we've got the concrete sidewalk on the building, uh, strip of trees, and then uh, maybe the paving and the fire access. And then we're going to maintain the existing sidewalk, uh, remove and reset the existing sidewalk where the existing trees are. Go ahead. Right. You want to walk us through Shaman? Sure. Um, so Shaman Street has, uh, basically what the plan there is to remove and reset the existing brick along Shaman Street. Um, there will be two new trees also. Um, and then as we said before, uh, the four parking spaces uh, will be here and here. There are also six rechargeable, five or six rechargeables um, that will be in Shaman Street. Also just to meet the bus, water, and sewer recharge requirements. We need the reason for the for the tree. Let's see. Is that was that some was that something which the neighborhood insisted? Because it's going to be a bit of a challenge for our street sweepers yes. to negotiate that. We agree with your last comment, but the neighbors, specifically residential neighbors directly across Shawmut Street, specifically asked us insisted. to maintain trees, yeah. which although there today are completely dead, but they want to have a tree line maintained tree line. on Shaman Street. I think both true for street sweeping and for snow plowing. And we should just, as we get into that, think about how, whatever your snow clearance plan is for your own sidewalk, there might be a way. In yes, which, we understand that. Yep. Okay. Help us to manage. Yes, we, we understand the problem with it. Uh, Chris, are there other things you want to cover? Yeah, so then I just had some general comments. I know, Chris, we talked uh, bef briefly before the meeting. Um, our office does is still reviewing the site plan for this project. They did so have some concerns, and I know you came in earlier this week to drop a revised plan off, but it hasn't been reviewed yet. So we just wanted to, we're okay with the work going forward as long as it's contingent upon our approval. Thank you. I appreciate it. You said the recharge wells are in Shamit or in the building? They're going to be in the sidewalk on Shamit Street. Okay. There's a tank in the building. Sorry, drainage, stormwater runoff drainage through the little tree bump out thing. Yes. So where's the water going? So there's a new catch basin that's going to be installed on Chapman Street. Um, we'll have a new, new main on the street which will connect to the existing bus water and sewer drain. And the little bump out for the tree is not going to impede the flow of water along the... No, so it's it's great. It's a little drain to that catch basin. Even if that thought. You've thought it through to make yes. sure that we are yes. not creating little yeah, pilot stops. The road is pitched so that it'll, it'll train. Other questions or comments on this specific repair plan? Any other top? Members of the public? All right. Uh, should that have this contingent on final approval? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Please, thank you. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion on this item again, contingent upon final approval from Boston Water. So. I'll make a motion to approve a set of joint petitions by Stuart. Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston property consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp re reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, groundwater recharge infrastructure, driveway, curb cuts, and a Sylvia cell. Groundwater retention tree root protection system is read into the record by the chair and has shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan 212 Stewart Street, Boston, six sheets dated December 2018 with the caveat Boston Water and Sewer final approval. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Second. Aye. So moved. We move on to our next item on a joint petition by Steward Acquisition 12 LLC, Steward Acquisition 22 LLC, and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of Steward Street, Boston proper, located on its southerly side at address numbers 212-222 east of Church Street and vertically above the grade of the sidewalk. This was new business on August 8th, 2019. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Vertical, Stewart Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated August 13th, 2019. All right, again, Chris Sider with the Engineering. Um, so this is uh, basically limited to some fairly public process. The building has been located um, to create more space on Church Street, which necessitated some takings, some vertical discontinuances. Um, on Shawnee Street, just to facilitate the building itself. So uh, this is a, so the thickness of these is approximately 2.3 feet, give or take. Um, Can you just walk us through the, sure. for each segment, point it on? So there's one. only one segment. Um, that, okay. And you just show us, and for my, you have a, the actual building face sort of. Uh, Scalped. It's yeah. scalp, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what you've got is, can you, you can create a single discontinuance rather than a. Yeah, yeah so we make them do it in a box because it can't be a function that defines it and it changes at every single level. So there's one box that represents the discontinuance, but the building will undulate within that box. Any the reason BBDA is a joint petition at these? Because we are the owner of the street. <coughs> so it's BBDA taking, BBDA will be the owner. Um, is the owner now. Um, they have the owner? Well, so they've just taken it from us. They'll be the, they are the owner now. And then when we vote, it's discontinuance, the BPDA can just go to the land. Hi, uh, Alec Pinelli from the uh, BPDA. We um, recorded the taking uh, in plan yesterday. Uh, so we are the, the owner at this point. Uh, so, just a couple of things. So, the discontinuance starts 24 feet above grade. Um, it's going to be residential space. There's a two and a half feet out, the entire length of the building, more or less. Yep. Will be the volume the entire, from 24 feet to the. Parts department routinely reviews all our plans, right? Yes. It goes through them because yes. that the part is within a certain distance of this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Parks Parks has gone through this. They were the ones who made the comments on Church Street right. predominantly okay. and how that all. And that so whatever they whatever thoughts they had about Stadler Park need to maintain that. They 100 percent waited on this. Okay. Other questions or comments on the vertical discontinuance? Can you talk? Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the vertical discontinuance. I make the motion to approve a joint petition by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC, Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC, and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the uh, vertical discontinuance of portion of Stewart Street, Boston proper, located on the southeasterly side, as read by the chair, as it, and shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan Vertical. Stewart Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated August 13, 2019. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to our final uh, public hearing item on a joint petition by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of two canopies over portions of Stewart Street, Boston proper, located on its southerly side at address numbers 212-222. Uh, east of Church Street. This was new business on August 8th, 2019. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, uh, Engineering Division, Canopy License, 212 Stewart Street, Boston, one sheet did December 2018. Right, Chris with the Engineering. Um, so these canopies are located along Stewart Street um, over the public sidewalk. So they're going to be minimum approximately 12.1 feet to the bottom of the canopy. Um, and they said now the one is 24 feet by approximately 10 feet, the other one being 16 and a half feet by approximately 6 feet. So we're talking two discount, or sorry, two canopies, uh, one 240 square feet, one 100 square feet. Um, going to be heat traced, internally drained. So this is a pre cast But it's disconnected, but it's actually attached, not to part of the building, it's actually attached to, correct. 
you have a rendering image. Anyway, that's sort of covered this. I'm sorry, I don't think we brought a rendering of that. Are you attaching any type of lighting structures to this canopy? No, yes, maybe. I believe there is internal downlit lighting that's structures. Right. Uh, other uh, questions or comments on the protection license? Are you done? All right. I'll take the motion on side. Make a motion to try, uh, to approve the joint petition by Stewart's acquisition, well, LLC and Stewart acquisition 22 LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of two can canopies. Is written into the record by the chair and is shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Canopy License. 212 Stewart Street, Boston, one sheet dated December 2018. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thanks so much. That's actually our final. But yeah, yeah. 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 well, they're our first action in the video. Oh, yeah. yeah. It won't go away. Yeah. <laughs> we want to. Yeah, we keep talking. In all fairness, we really want to. <laughs> in, in, but this is BPDA, it's not a co petition on this. Right, moving on to our new business portion uh, with 212 Stewart Street, Shawmut uh, Street, Church Street, Boston Proper discontinuances on a joint petition by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC. All right, so again, Chris Adi with Ditch Engineering. So this is for the discontinuance of a couple of uh, pedestrian easements which have previously been uh, put on near the site. So these easements are no longer needed. We're providing access in a different way based on the design that we just presented. Um, so what happened on this is this was um, in 2008, there was another project that was approved for this location that was never constructed. And as part of that approval, the owner at the time granted pedestrian easements on this property, which with this new proposal, um, they need to be discontinued. So that's why we're here for that. <clears throat> Housekeeping, right? Just yes, deal. Yeah, Questions or comments on this? Name your top members of the public. All right. See you guys in two weeks on this. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Until the Moving on to our next item, 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, and Roxbury, vertical discontinuances, pedestrian easements, specific repairs on a set of joint petitions by 10 Tabor Street, LLC, and the Boston Planning and Development Agency. architect and uh, landscape architect for the project. Um, with me is Jacob Murray from Waterfield Design. He's the civil engineer and they are surveyors for the project also. Uh, he will present uh, the uh, three items on the agenda here for us. Perfect. so kind and give us a bit of an overview of your project so this way well, we can understand. Should I? I'll, please. I'll, give, you, That'd be great. Please. I'll give you that part. You so We're going to build a, a, a new building. It's a vacant parcel that's been used for the construction of storage, uh, storage of construction uh, vehicles and the like for the last uh, good period of time. Uh, and on that site, uh, which uh, we'll build a six-story building that will fully occupy the site. It will have 45 for sale units one retail space, and nine car parking garage. The parking garage is at grade and will be entered from uh, Tabor Street um, directly into on-level parking at street level. Um, there is a small curb cut, which uh, Jacob will explain on that end. The, uh, it's a six-story building, as I said, and uh, it's a masonry building trying to relate to the Bruce Bowling building. As part of our design for the building, 
we created what are called, people call them bays, but they're technically, in architect speak, uh, they are orioles. When they don't reach the ground, that's what they're supposed to be called. So anyway, they're, uh, they're kind of diagonal, and they sort of catch like facets from Warren Street down this small Tabor Street. So it was thought by the architects at BPDA and ourselves that this would add to the interest of the building. The coloring of the building will be uh, similar to the lighter colors of the brick and masonry on the uh, Bruce Bowling building. So we're trying to relate to what's there. And with that in mind, uh, civil engineering, please. I'll start with the specific repairs. Talk briefly about the pedestrian easements and then the vertical discontinuance. The uh, specific repairs is uh, along, the, the building is along Orange Street and Tabor Street. Along Tabor Street, there's the existing bituminous concrete sidewalk. On Orange Street, there's the brick. And we're proposing to replace it with uh, concrete. Uh, we'll also be doing upgrades with adding trees along Tabor Street uh, with permanent pavers around them. And then also adding the double A city standard double acorn lights along Tabor Street. In addition, there'll be a curb cut, as Phil mentioned, that'll access the, the garage underneath. Uh, and that's a 10 foot wide uh, curb cut uh, along Tabor Street. And then that's really the bulk of the specific repairs that follows the whole face of the building. There will be replacing there. Uh, there'll be accessible ramps added for both sides of Tabor Street. Uh, and then the, uh, the pedestrian easement is just there's a thin area uh, between the building and the, and the proxy property that will, will be uh, included in the pedestrian easement. Uh, so it'll be, all be really one sidewalk. That was, request, sorry, that was requested by the city, yes? Right, so to make yeah. our minimum pedestrian path of travel um, and to, you know, so that the whole cement concrete walking path is part of it. So for the public hearing, we truly appreciate how you gave an overview of the project. To supplement that testimony, if you can, if you have an isometric view or a photograph or anything, and if you get mounted, that will say so many words for the public hearing. Not today. Not today. Not for okay. the public we, hearing. So we, that we, way it will be in the context of the words which you told us. Thank you, sir. Uh, as a proud architect, I have wonderful rendering yeah. and yeah. things, yeah. And yeah. I have been trained by my legal, my lawyer friends to keep it short and sweet. And uh, let them ask you questions, Phil. So thank you for asking. I am, I'll be proud to bring them back. Especially when you said it has to be in the context of the bowling building, it will be helpful for this commission to uh, ponder over the wisdom of your project. Thank you. Uh, I don't think you're going to rent at Tabor and Warren. Is that right? Sorry. Can you just show the also the public here the ramp that you're putting in? The ramp you're rebuilding at Tabor and Warren. The sorry, that's the ramp. ramp. The ramp. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, detail or rendering? Yeah, sorry. exactly. Okay. So you show the ramp on your side, yes. um, and then that means that you're obligated to ensure that the ramp on the opposite side is in full compliance. So either you go out there and you confirm it and put it on the plan, it's fully compliant. If it's compliant and missing tactile warning, you just add tactile warning. If not, you have to reconstruct all reciprocal ramps. Okay. It is. And is there? Oh, go ahead. It is there. No. But it's maybe at the wrong angle, you know, facing too much in the bank and not perpendicular to yep. and parallel. Right. Okay. So that's what he'll confirm. We've agreed to rebuild whatever's yep. necessary to have that happen. So opposing. Yeah, ramps. so it should just be on the plan, both the ramp that you're reconstructing and the residual ramp, and it's that. Yeah. And it looks like we all, there's only a crossing of Tabor, not a crossing of Warren, because well, that would be sort of mid block. There's some later iteration where it actually is included, but we okay. want to give that detail as. Right. right, and exactly. so like the ramp that we need the physical ramp so that we understand the orientation of the ramp and the cross. Okay, yeah. so the, the uh, like it should show the wings and everything like a, a full ramp. And the, yeah, the technical warning system. Yeah. Okay. And one thing I would encourage if you want not already is just to uh, connect with Amy and Todd about other conduit that might need to go to the street lights that you're going to put in uh, because it's highly likely that this area is going to see somebody who will want to put uh, potentially an antenna in this area, which rather than dig up your sidewalk if that conduit's already there, mm -hmm. would make, it makes your project a lot better, makes that project a lot easier. And so when, you when you're connecting our street lighting conduit, we'll ask for a redundancy in the electrical and also blank conduits for fiber optics. Um, and that will allow, a DAS antenna company needs to replace 
place and antenna, they will dig up your brand new cancel. Is that something you want to see on the plans then? Yes. If you do this in the plans to street lighting, or do you send? Yeah, they, they've already gone through street lighting. It, it's, it. it's more of a Check smart utility um, requirement that, that is the um, readiness for antenna. So our, our, uh, Article 880, is this uh, been approved? In terms of? So small project, large project, what are we doing dealing with here? So we're through in design review. Uh, Michael Canizo and I are meeting regularly to go through masonry, mortar, windows. Uh, but uh, as far as the article, is this small project or large project? It's small project. Small project. Traffic so and parking. How are we servicing the building? Delivering, loading. Sorry. Sorry. So article 80, the traffic and par parking, seeing it's small project, what's the, how are we servicing from the building from the traffic and parking? Um, so How are you loading your building? How are we loading, loading the building? Yes, where's loading occurring? From where? From where? In the garage. In the garage. And that's the driveway out in the chamber. Yeah. And how many bays? How much space? How many bays for the loading dock? There isn't a loading dock. No loading dock. No loading dock. So how do you load the building for deliveries? You have a commercial unit on the ground floor, right? What is the anticipated so, loading for? Well, we have, there's an easement in the rear. Yes, there is. There's an easement in the rear of between the two buildings that allows you to do pull up uh, delivery. And then there, isn't there a pull up door in the back? It's, there's a door there as well. Yeah. We're and bringing so, trash in and out from that door. Okay, so what we need to do here, being a small product, we need to bring in, and generally it doesn't for this because this specific area is getting redeveloped right now with a master plan with Pat Hoey exactly. and the transportation department. I would suggest that you touch base with Pat Hoey from the transportation department on the Article 80 review for traffic and parking issues so that basically concurrently it's built in a design that they're looking at Warren, Washington in the Dudley Square area. So you need to have a review done by the Transpor transportation department planning division with uh, Patrick Hoey, who's the project manager in this area. And related to that, the, there's a specific project of Pat's running, W Square Phase 2, which actually includes the reconstruction of sections of Warren Street. We just want to make sure that in design and in timing that that is well sequenced. So between now and the public hearing, just connect with, just make sure you're connecting with Pat. The construction management plan, have we developed, are we developing it at CMP for how we're going to build this building? Uh, that is being developed and that will be formalized. Before. That needs to be submitted to my office. I'd like to see it before the next hearing. You will see that before the next hearing for certain. Because the, the builder, contractor, <laughs> owner, have, uh, they're into it. They're deep into it. So. Can you walk us through the uh, pedestrian easements? The best of agencies are, are, I think it was spoken before, uh, the area between the city property and the building, where it basically the sidewalk would just be continuing. And so those are, those are the areas that are being added to the easement process. So the owner is giving up that part. We moved the facade of the building back um, a foot and a half to zero, or a one inch, you know, basically to create what are two slivers or three slivers along there to maintain that seven foot distance for accessibility. So. How many floors are there below grade? Uh, None. All slab on grade? That is correct. There, there's an adjacent building, the Palmer building that was built uh, 20 years ago, say. And that is built in without a basement, basically, also because of the soil conditions there. Our geotechnical engineer, McPhail Associates, advised us to keep away from that, yeah. you know, okay. so for a number of reasons. So. And the vertical discontinuances for the order. Anybody else? So these are completely. They are between 12 and 13 feet off the grade, where the vertical distance is 
start. Approximately 60 feet up to the top of the top of the building to get a bird. You're bumping out two to three. Yeah. So if you again have that wonderful foot up here, those right. pictures you you will be in, in a much easier position to help us to understand why the discontinuity discontinuous needs to yes. happen. Uh, Thank you, sir. We'll, we will certainly do that. have that for the public hearing. Yes, sir. Great. Anything else you want to cover about uh, it's, yeah, it's all what, I've Sorry, what is your rough timeline to do this work? Because as the chair and others have mentioned, right. we have a roadway reconstruction project and hopefully it will all come together <coughs> without clashing. Yeah, so okay. your timeline for construction? October, start construction. That yes, sir. So between now and the uh, public hearing, connecting with Pat, uh, just upgrading the plans to be able to show some details like the pedestrian ramps, connecting with PSC about the uh, uh, conduit and street lights, and all those are something like that. And then obviously, uh, some boards are simply showing the uh, building itself. Yeah, they'll be just repeat that yeah, to yeah, you, so I know. Connect with Pat Hogan yep. regarding the loading. Uh, pedestrian ramp details. I know. Providing transportation department with, with uh, CMC. Yep. Uh, and then renderings, full renderings for you. And the street lighting. And the disconnect with uh, Amy and Todd about street lighting. Okay. Nice project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. See you guys on uh, September 12th. September 12th. Wonderful. Perfect. All right, until then. Thank you. Our next item is uh, 15 Arlington Street, Newbury Street, Boston Proper, pedestrian easement, specific repairs on a set of petitions by IREP, Newbury Hotel, LLC. Good morning, John Schmidt with, with Niche Engineering, um, and beside me is Michael Lempier with John, Jane, uh, Jones Lang LaSalle, and we're here today on behalf of the Taj Hotel, where we're proposing um, we a series of uh, specific repairs and a pedestrian easement for public sidewalk improvements. The hotel is uh, currently going through a series of interior renovations um, throughout the building, as well as in, uh, renovations to the exterior space. This is uh, a rendering of the Newberry Street side where uh, we're proposing to raise a, a plaza because of the great change between the doorway and the public sidewalk. Where we, within the site itself, within the private property, we're building a public plaza and providing site, accessible site access um, from Arlington Street up the ramp that you might see here. Um, the improvements that are of interest to the Public Improvement Commission have to do with the improvements here within Newberry Street and as well as on Arlington Street. John, sorry, can you just keep that thing up for a second? Sure. So the plaza which you are speaking of, which is going to manage the great difference between your lower step and the city street, right. is on private property. Correct. Right? So, we, so uh, give me a second. Yeah. So as a public person who needs to enter your property, do I need to go over the stairs or is there a pedestrian ramp that can both. Oh, there's both. And, but the pedestrian uh, ramp is on your private property? Yes. Yeah, correct. So, so are we going to get an easement to no, have... so like that whole area is going to stay private, and a portion of what they're granting us as a pedestrian easement is going to be the part that extends our cement concrete sidewalk below their patio. Patio is going to stay So it's all thought of. Thank you. Yeah. My yes. yes. And the ramp is off of Arlington as opposed to off of the Yeah, so the, the plaza is, is here. The stairs are here. The stairs are here. So the improvements with the Newberry Street, we, we will reconstruct the sidewalks to comply with the complete street um, components. We are providing a nine foot wide pervious paver um, along the curb line and then a nine foot wide concrete sidewalk. We will be planting three, uh, four new street trees and we've been through the Parks Department and have the tree removal approvals. Um, and new street lights as well. 
Um, and then we are reconstructing the ramps at the intersection right here. There's a, uh, an apex ramp that is compliant, but at the request of the city, we are building two ramps perpendicular to the curb line, and we are also rebuilding the reciprocal ramps opposite Newberry Street and opposite Arlington Street. Um, we are showing them today as a, as a diagram, but when we're here for the public hearing, it will be fully uh, designed. We're waiting for the surveyor to catch up with us, and we can nail it down, nail the design, and that will be presented on the documents at the public hearing. Uh, on Arlington Street, we are rebuilding the concrete sidewalk. There will be 11 feet wide of concrete, and then we have a three foot wide pervious paper here. Um, and we have a new street light at this corner as well, and one new street tree. And again, we have the reciprocal ramp opposite Arlington Street that abuts the public garden. Not shown on these plans, but um, agreed to by the proponent is the Via Public Alley number 437 here, and we will be rebuilding the reciprocal ramp here as well. So it will be uh, unimpeded pedestrian accessible access throughout the site and onto our budding properties. Um, we, the next piece is we are asking for if we need we John, have a quick question about that. Here. I know I know there's a number of conversations about it, yeah. but is there a, a drainage or, or why not make it just a, a, a raised crossing at that repair? Because it's a public alley, it's a public street. So we're not actually, I guess, uh, not necessarily, John. Yeah, I mean, so the chiefs. I think it's, it becomes a truck issue. Like the, like the trucks basically pull in and stop right there. Um, so, uh, like, but yes, yeah, so it, it, uh, because it's a public alley, we could still have it be and reflect the raised crossing. Um, so I mean, that, if the city would like, we can explore that. Um, have a raised sidewalk through there, and then it raises the question: Do you want the? Would you want the tap as well? Right. Um, so we were going more conventional. So, John, uh, sir, it may be the Taj Hotel now, but this this building has had such a historical illustrious past, and its proximity to the public garden. So there's a huge pedestrian presence over there. Sure. Arlington is one of our most beloved roadways. So uh, if you can give consideration to a more of a pedestrian environment as much as recognizing the enormous history of this building, rather than just limiting to the our city's current uh, complete street standards, I think uh, what might be needed is a reflection on conformity into the area. So I'm not sure we're making this very clear. Yes, let's try to make raised crossing. Yeah, we'll, we'll explore yeah. that. Yeah. If we can do it without adding drainage, right. we'll right. drainage yeah. then we'll yeah. do it. So it causes drainage impacts, and we'll, we'll go with what Just we're Just manage that situation accordingly, because yeah. your location is really, sure. really nice. Okay. No and, and maybe slight, well, not off topic, but related. Uh, you know, we are, the hotel is also a condo owner in the building next door, right? And I can tell you that we have been having discussions with them about the potential for replacing the sidewalk. Uh, in front of the Carlton House, which is the adjacent building. It's not committed no, to. but that's but perfect. Yeah. So this way, there can be a common vocabulary. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just not in front of your building, but you know, yeah. along all of Arlington. So, okay. so if, if, if it works design-wise, we'll treat this as a commercial driveway, almost a commercial driveway, with the full width, flush sidewalk condition, and then just a curb corner here, like you would yeah. right there. And put some, you know, wire mesh or something, John, so that the sidewalk. No, don't do that. Public oh. Works doesn't like it. You don't like it. Correct. Uh, you can go to an additional two inches of okay. cement we'll, concrete. Okay. Anything that you want to. Please don't put it. We'll do what the re like regulations ask for. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's this, and then getting uh, the pedestrian easement. We have to provide a pedestrian easement on getting back to Newberry Street. Um, We had proposed uh, providing an easement that's just wide enough to provide a six foot wide concrete accessible access. Uh, the city has required, um, has asked that we provide a full pedestrian easement width to the face of the wall. So we will end this plan and when we're here at the public hearing, we'll have, about a, we'll have a nine foot public sidewalk that's, that provides nice clear access. Um, regarding the CMP, Consigli had submitted that and it's with your office for review. Is, is, uh, we're talking about Simply originally submitted the uh, CMP for the exterior and interior. I have not seen anything, I don't believe, for the sidewalk reconstruction. Okay, we will look into Just that. Just check, check yep. that out. We'll do. Um, Just on that, that point, too, with the CMP. Uh, in the CMP, I'd like to see the new signage and markings uh, annotated on that CMP. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll show the crosswalks and the stop Crosswalks, valet, valet signage should be okay. all updated. Okay, you got it. Um, and then uh, Coulson and Storrs will be reaching out to Chung regarding the LMI. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think that's it. We hope we tend to have everything in order for the 12th for a public hearing. Question on the easements or repairs? And your time? Members of the public? All right, and you can make some of those updates and then explore the uh, alley entrance. Yes, absolutely. Down the 12th. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is 5, uh, 533-535 Columbus Avenue, Boston Proper, Sidewalk Cafe, license on a petition by LLOB Associates, LLC, doing business as Five Horses Tavern. Good morning. How are you doing? Great. So I'm Scott Whitland. I represent LLOB LLC, which is doing business as Five Horses Tavern. This is Dylan Welsh, who's the primary owner and proprietor of the restaurant. Um, so we're, what we're doing is we're asking the uh, PIC to allow us to expand what's currently an existing private patio um, by about four, a little bit over four feet into the public way, um, essentially expanding the um, patio to about 44 seats. Um, so that's the general gist of it. Uh, we're um, we're going to use the existing planters that are there as barriers, and we just push them back a little bit um, as well, and so they would then be able to push right back in when out of season. And I know we've received uh, some outreach from the community about this. Can you talk a little bit yeah. about your community engagement, what you've done so far, what you've been hearing from residents, how you've been responding to that? Thank you. Uh, you want me to go? Oh, you can start. Yeah. So basically this process with the community started probably about three years ago where the community association gave about a, a conditional letter of approval subject to a meeting. Um, for the past, I'd say since March, Dylan has had a variety of meetings with the president of the association. Um, as of last week, they actually had a, um, we posted he, uh, notices and they had a meeting on the 22nd, I think it was, with the community season. association and the communities abroad. And as far as we know at this point, there's no objections from the community. Um, in addition, we have about 20, locked we have 18 signed letters from people within the community of supporting the um, expansion into the public way. Um, we've also done a pedestrian study to show that it doesn't impact any uh, pedestrian access that actually you'll have about you still have a little over eight and a half feet of pedestrian access even after the expansion uh, um, onto the public way. Did you do a level of service analysis? Yes, I think it was submitted with the um, and it, the conclusion was it would have no impact on pedestrian access. Uh, um, yeah, just make sure it came yes. to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, do you mind things on the, on the details? So you're showing the planters that sort of ring most of the edge, but not the Claremont Park side. Uh, you have to continue down to connect to the building. You yeah. can't just surround the area that's on the, the public way. The, the planters need to continue um, for accessibility. You can't sweep. It's better protected on that edge. Right. So extend what you're doing uh, down the Claremont Park edge. I'm the, maybe because of on the so currently, yeah, yeah, yeah. one side, maybe, maybe because it is on private property, they may Right. They may be thinking that it is not needed to show it, but let them understand. Right. So yes. you want to see the planters over here on this edge you're talking yeah. about? Yep. So they're going to they're going to continue right down this edge because it's still we, for accessibility purposes. We can't have people just walking into your tables. I think there's we can't this we can't return all the way to the building because this is our exit. It's right. So it's just uh, so to enclose the tables. Doesn't need to okay, be just yeah, gotcha. It the, okay. It, that edge needs to be defined um, gotcha. as something okay. that okay. if you're uh, key shooting. Yeah, you show the in that person, okay. that's the one. Between. Okay, so we can address the plan to show that. Sure. That's fine. Uh, my understanding of sort of the concerns that have been raised, correct me if I'm wrong, are sort of twofold. One is around noise, uh, and the other is around sort of the sort of continuous sort of pedestrian access along Columbus Ave. On the first one, are you proposing adjusting any change in hours or? No, no, no look at change in hours. And, and then on the second, are you familiar with, are, are there any other sidewalk cafes that have, that bump out into this stretch of Columbus Ave? On Columbus Ave, th on this side of the street, across the street, there's actually a restaurant that has further out than we are. Um, on Columbus Ave in your area, there's not, there's not on my on side. Our side of this side of the street. Right. And there's nothing on this block specific other than Five Horses Tavern. Right. But on the op but opposite you, there is a yeah, Petit yeah. Robert across the street. Yeah, yeah. I have a render a picture of that if you want. It would actually be great if you could just 
one, I think this has been, or if I'm wrong, this has been an issue which, is, which has come up, and for us just to simply understand as, as the commission, what has been our standard along Columbus Ave, other places where we have. Can I bring this up to you? Very helpful. This is, this is the people we have right across the street. In regards to the noise thing, we've been in business for seven years, almost seven years, and we've had no uh, noise violations or any uh, violations from the city at all on that point. Uh, to Rivera, uh, uh, as an example, the resulting sidewalk width between the furnishings on the brick area, the, the, the concrete that is available for public path of travel is right. it's less than what we're. That's a lot less. So we're going to have about, about six, two feet less. less. Yeah, we're going to have about six and a half feet on the f concrete, and then there's, although the brick is about five feet, the, I think the study showed about two and a half feet of that is accessible. It's eight for, eight feet eight, seven inches eight. to the trash can, which is the closest thing to the patio. So, yeah. and that and that brick the pinch point. Other questions or comments? Any other comments? Members of the public? All right. Uh, if you can just, one of the helpful is between now and. Yeah, we'll do. We'll get the plan for you. We'll that and then we make sure this, that we have the pedestrian level of service. Well, it, we sent it over already, but I'll, I can make sure you, you have it. You sent it to me? Uh, I think so. You're Ed, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's why I sent it to you. If you're Ed, then I sent it to you. If you're not Ed, then I don't know who I sent it to. <laughs> I'll check. <laughs> Uh, All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the 12th. All right. Sure. Great. Thank you. Very actually, much. you know what? If you, I haven't studied it. Actually, I have it. If you want me to hand it to you right now. Sure. Give me a. Oh, you got it? All right. I hope. So the man will make sure you hand deliver it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So we'll so, so see you soon. Well, and we'll get a rendering update of everything. Thank you. Our next item of new business is Birch Street, West Roxbury, specific repairs on a joint petition by the Rosendale Village Main Streets and the City of Boston Transportation Department. Hello, uh, Jacob Wessel on behalf of the Boston Transportation Department. Uh, petitioning for the Birch Street Pedestrian Plaza. Um, here we have representatives here from Rosendale Main Streets, uh, Rosendale Village Main Streets, uh, Anthony Giordano, the board president. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Nina Chase. I'm uh, the landscape architect for the project with Merritt Chase. So um, this project stems from uh, about a year long community process where uh, the folks at Rosendale Village Main Streets and the merchants along Birch Street approached approach the city of Boston about um, creating a pedestrian way on their street. It's a uh, one-way street that leads vehicles currently sort of in a, in a redundant pattern that ultimately takes them back to where they started, given the one-way um, routing on Corinth Street and Belgrade. Um, uh, we had a few block parties there last June and then a week-long demonstration in early May of this year. We've been working with the folks uh, on the street and surrounding business owners uh, to implement this street in a tactical fashion using the City of Boston's tactical public realm guidelines whereby we won't be um, doing any digging or permanent construction, but doing cosmetic implementation on top of the street. Um, as part of the, uh, the review of this project, we've worked closely with the fire department who we had out at, the, um, at our implementation of the week-long pilot and uh, have, we'll review with Nina the design of the project so that uh, we can talk through all the comments we've received. Thank you. Um, from a design and construction standpoint, as, as Jacob mentioned, everything is a surface, uh, is an addition to the existing asphalt surface of the road. Um, so we're looking at paint applied directly to the asphalt and then um, uh, steel powder coated uh, planters that would be sitting on top of the asphalt with trees in them um, and then movable tables and chairs within the, within the right of way. Do you have a rendering of the paint pattern? We yeah. do, yes. I, can I bring that? The duct tape was fantastic. It's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> our new favorite that's put here. Yeah. 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 There's also a plan. Yeah. 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 Jacob, who is going to install this stuff, us, right? 
Yeah, so the city will be putting this out to bid for um, construction of prawn approval. No, no, uh, mobilize. Okay. So the construction is being done by in-house? Right, well, it'll be put out to bid for a contractor, but with city funds. Okay. City will be managing the construction, right? City will be managing the construction, and uh, for maintenance, the we're in negotiations on a maintenance contract between uh, Rothnell Village Main Streets and the city. We will take some um, maintenance, and, and they will take some like things like watering planters and things like that. So very really exciting. Thank you guys for doing this. The, the string of lights on the top, can mm -hmm. you just? Sure, just yes. That sure, bit? so there'll be string lights that'll be attached from building face to building face um, that will be high enough uh, to meet the demands of fire department, um, but they will be LED string lights um, that would go across the street, the full length of Birch Street. So I'm sure you have positively thought through this, all of this stuff. Just for the record, uh, you have permissions from all the buildings to make these attachments? We're working on that right now, yes. You will have those uh, permissions before the public hearing? Correct. Yes. Please go. One, one of the building owners is Anthony right here. Anthony, thank um. you for supporting this stuff. <laughs> so it, it, this is the direction which we are trying to go, so your, your wisdom to cooperate with us is truly appreciated. That's one. Two, the juice, the power that actually gets to the light, mm -hmm. the source of that power is? There are existing city poles that we'd be drawing power from. So you need to show that detail of how the power goes from the okay. base of a street light pole, because this is again an underground district, if my memory serves me correctly, Jacob. Yep. Okay, so the detail as to how the- Where the power is coming from. Let's assume it is from this light pole, just for conversation right. purposes. Sure. Yep. So how do you take the juice from here and yep. get up that building? Mm -hmm. Yep. Attached to his okay. building, a riser, so those details needs to be- mm -hmm. But these are easy details. Yes. Okay, and this is not heavy lifting. Yep. The mere yep. fact that we're happy you to have the wisdom them. to show this is spot on. Great. We will include that. What? Finally get your lights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 20 plus happy years. to help. Yeah. It's taken two decades. You know, that's how long it. <laughs> okay. So, so we will work with you to make this thing happen. Okay. But just. We'll show the detail, the GFCI okay. box. Okay. Yeah. I just had some comments from Boston Water and Sewer. We do have facilities in this area. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to send you a map of our locations. That would be great. And also, um, you know, as long as you understand, we have the right to be there at any time. So in case something happens, we have to, you know, we can, we can go right in and of do course. what we have to do. So, yep. okay, thank you. We're avoiding covering anything with utilities, or any covering any utilities with the planters. Um, okay, great. And we thank understand that. Okay, and great, the, thank you. The city will reserve maintenance funding if any asphalt cuts do need to be made to then replace the um, painting. The street was repaved last year, so there was a bunch of utility work done uh, just before that through the Kobuck system. Jacob, bad questions. Our relationship with the Merit Chase, is it just for this project or is it for multiple projects? Uh, it's just for this project. There's one other. There's one other <laughs> project that we have in formulation for a, a parklet with them as well. Yep. Um, but they're welcome to bid on any future projects we put out to bid. Because this model, we so desperately want to replicate this so many places. Yes. Including uh, Union Street, part of the Connect Historic Boston. There are all these alleyways which we want to uh, create this look. Yep. They're yeah, anxious to do it. This, this won't be the, the last time you see me with a uh, plaza project. He's so disappointed. Small question, I imagine, for you to do this, but the tables that we just looked at from an accessibility standpoint. Yes. Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure what we're We're actually looking at um, those measurements and confirming that they meet okay. ADA. That was one of the comments. Perfect. Yep. Anything from a legal traffic circulation in case of a car goes through, so this roadway is still open to public? Yeah. But I think the question is, 
when we take the vote. Are we voting on the street designation and open to public travel? Are we changing that? Or is it simply a traffic rule and regulation change for the operation yeah, of the street? It's a traffic, it's a BTD traffic right. regulation change. Yeah. It, it's still a public way, it's still open to public travel, and, and that public travel is defined by BTD as the one moves. But we will have all the visual cues aiming in case some mud. Yeah, there will be planters essentially that look Between very blocks. much like you should so yes. so be. Yeah. So on either end of Bird Street, there are smaller planters that are actually going to be on casters. That's one of the requests from the fire department is that they could be moved out of the way if need be. Um, but they will be there uh, semi-temporarily so that it, you wouldn't be able to drive a car down. What about loading and unloading for any of the assets or the buildings along this area? Because downtown crossing is a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we, 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 are, we can't be taking steps forward and 100 steps backward. Just before we get to that point, just going back to the fire department, that was one of my main mm -hmm. comments. I mean, the chief, made, I'd like to get a specific written response from him, okay. specifically for access for firefighting exposures on yep. the street. That's very important Sure. for that. Getting to police response, mm -hmm. I mean, that's one, you need to get something from the, the district captain. Yep basically on the accessibility and response for them. Yep. But the fire department is the key, is the key. player here yep. for firefighting exposures on that street for the buildings. Could, couldn't agree with you more. So in, in talking through, we'll get, we'll get a letter with the exact um, specifications that they gave to us, but um, mainly was given the height of the building on the, um, on the side of Birch Street, uh, closer to the back parking lot there, it's just one story. And so they said that they wouldn't use uh, also, given the the narrowness of Birch Street, when there's two, when there's parked cars on both sides right now, they actually wouldn't be able to get um, a, a fire truck down there, and so would just use ladders uh, there. Uh, there's also no hydrants on the street, so they would be pumping water with a hose um, from, uh, I believe it's. Uh, there's a hydrant Cor on the other Corinth side. There. On Corinth. But yeah, I'll I'll get that written for you. Sure. Um, as for the loading question, um, most loading today occurs um, from the side streets, not on Birch itself, and also from the parking lot in the rear. Um, uh, during the week-long pilot, this was one of the main things we were observing, and we did interviews with all the businesses afterwards to see if they had any loading concerns, and everyone was able to uh, adequately load from 18-wheelers with beer kegs to um, UPS trucks and things like that. Mm. <laughs> Who is here from the main streets? I'm sorry. Hi. No, no, just, just, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, no, it, it, it's, it, these are steps in the right direction where the main streets working with the business owners are allowing us to create more vibrant spaces. So thank you. Two other minor things. I, I don't know if you're very mindful of this. Just to think about the volume. Do we have enough bike racks? There are not a lot of experience. There's not a lot of other poles or places to be able to park bikes in this corridor. We're showing two in this location, but mm -hmm. yeah, we, we may change that to a corral uh, if if uh, need be, because it'll be easier to secure to the street. Um, uh, there's currently one bike rack in front of the Boston Cheese Cellar on the sidewalk. Um, uh, unclear whether that'll uh, move given the the change of the nature of the street. Uh, that's also something we can add in uh, afterwards if need be. Mm -hmm. And a small thing we may want to think about adding in afterwards is uh, the planters on casters. Whether we actually want a visual cue of where they should be actually going when they are in their standard yeah, location. Yeah, in the pavement. Get, correct. Mm -hmm. um, just to consider that, I don't know if that, but thinking you know, of uh, some things that have been uh, moved, that just as, to remind folks about where else would like the. Yeah, the that's a good location. idea. Yep. Just to follow up on that, 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 another one of the comments that I had, Jacob, was the outdoor cafes. If the businesses so desire to establish an outdoor cafe, I mean, are we going to change the design? Or how we? I mean, what's the process? Come back here. Mm -hmm. right. It's obviously with the layout right now, yep. it kind of prohibits that right now. So, so um, it, the the two businesses that have expressed a desire for outdoor. Uh, Patios, Distraction Brewing, which is not yet open, and Birch Street Bistro. So there's space between those two planters where they could have an outdoor patio. But as Amy said, they would come back here for that uh, to establish that. But um, that would be a detached uh, patio with service across the public right of way. Maybe we need to be 
flexible, dynamic with our outdoor cafe policies to be able to yes. have a better... We have added flexibility for situations just like okay. this. We anticipate them coming back with cafes, but I think we're going to kind of define where everything is. Yep. And then, okay. yeah, we anticipate cafes coming and they will be in the street bed. Yeah, because... Of, like Union Street. Yeah, 10 words or less, my chair is going to be middle of a street and I want to ask to be legally be positioned in that situation without administratively stopping us. Mm -hmm. Just speaking of Union Street, where, where, where are we in that process? So, I, mean, I don't see anything yeah. out there. Yeah, so they're in licensing. Um, oh. And we're... They've passed licensing, okay. but are oh, with... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so we're, we're waiting for them to all get aligned um, because we have to change the parking regulation. We want to do it all at once. We don't want to remove parking before that shows up. It needs to kind of happen together. We're waiting for them to have all their furniture and stuff ready to go. Okay. We'll come to BTD for the... the so it's getting ready. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just taste rocks of the weekends. Yeah, it, I'm not sure where we'll stand with this season, but that's the goal is to have it happen simultaneously. Other questions or comments? Name your time. We're good. Members of the public? All right. See you guys in two weeks. Great. All right. Just thank you. Thank you very much. Come back with the, or connect around the fire department stuff. Yeah. All right, our final item of new business is Center Street, Highland Avenue, Linwood Street, Highland Street, Marcella Street, Cedar Street, Millmont Street, Guild Street, Lambert Street, uh, Lambert Ave, uh, Thornton Street, and Roxbury specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. Um, Stephanie Seskin uh, here from the Boston Transportation Department um, for our neighborhood slow streets program. Um, these are our proposed improvements in the Highland Park neighborhood, um, which is one of 12 zones in the city going through um, the process for um, safety improvements and traffic calming measures um, at key locations. Um, we've been working with the Highland Park neighborhood um, for almost two years now um, on understanding what their concerns are and what the best interventions may be to address those concerns. With neighborhood slow streets, we are bringing the regulatory traffic speed down to 20 mile per hour on most streets. Um, an exception in Highland Park is Center Street itself um, will stay at 25 mile per hour. Um, but we are otherwise focusing on key areas near parks and schools to make improvements, um, particularly for pedestrian safety, um, and then adding speed humps elsewhere to address concerns around speeding. Um, and to also help self-enforce the speeds to 20. Um, otherwise, uh, not sure that people would <laughs> change their habits. Um, so I'm joined with uh, by Radu Nan from Kittleson and Associates, who is the engineer on these plans and can walk through um, each page that you have in front of you. Good morning. As uh, Stephanie suggested, um, the proposed improvements uh, at 29 speed humps within the neighborhood, um, the locations of the speed humps were determined based on the street geometry, the width, the grade, um, access for MBTA buses, um, as well as average daily traffic, um, number of travel lanes, um, and emergency vehicle access. The separation between the speed humps is approximately 200 and 250 feet. This was found to be um, more effective than the pilot um, that was built in the Dorchester neighborhood, where the, the separation between the speed humps was greater. Uh, closer to 300 and 350 feet. Um, so the, the speed humps presented here are, again, between 200 and 200, 250 feet. Um, <coughs> at, if there's a, no question about the speed humps. No. Okay, a more permanent changes. Uh, the reason for permanent changes include maintenance, um, desirability from the neighborhood to have a more aesthetic look, permanent look, to these improvements, um, the sidewalk, um, and safety. <clears throat> the first improvement is at Marcella Street and Highland Street. Um, this location, um, Marcella is a two-way street with on-street parking on one side, 
Um, the intersection is located within a transition where the cross section um, for Marcella Street widens from 26 to 30 feet. Um, this is a very active crosswalk um, coming down the neighborhood into the Marcella playground. So we see a lot of children. That was one of the um, uh, concerns from the neighborhood and uh, why this area was pointed out and suggested for, um, for permanent uh, improvements. Um, <clears throat> the uh, improvement here is to widen the sidewalk six feet from the existing edge of Marcella Street, which uh, narrows down Marcella Street to um, um, 23 feet. To also reconstruct the existing apex curve uh, ramps into directional pedestrian um, ramps. Um, and through, through this process, we're, we uh, looked at um, maintaining positive drainage. Uh, we're maintaining and readjusting where needed um, catch basins maintained by uh, Boston Water and Sewer. The cross section on Highland Street is not changing, and that was primarily due to um, uh, fire ladder access. Um, <clears throat> the next location is around uh, along Cedar Street. This is uh, right in front of the uh, Nathan Hale Elementary. Um, the access here is roughly halfway um, between two existing intersection at um, um, Lambert Ave and Hawthorne. Um, morning observations um, show that a lot of people, pu pupils, uh, sorry, cross at this mid-block location. Um, we've discussed the um, current uh, crossings with the school and uh, between the school and the local constituents, um, there was a recommendation to add a race crosswalk here. Uh, I also have to point that this race crosswalk would also uh, facilitate 20 mile an hour um, speed profile along Cedar because it's going to be part of um, and work in concert with the speed humps that um, we are proposing upstream and downstream from this crosswalk. Um, again, the, the location is roughly halfway between uh, two existing intersections. There are, um, we've numbered 26, counted 26 crossings of this location. We're proposing the addition of two catch basins to um, uh, avoid ponding and maintain drainage upstream from the crosswalk. Um, and those would be joined with a, a manhole. Do you know where the school bus that happens to have? Uh, further north. Further north. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, the parents do some pickup drop off um, on the, I, sorry, I, I guess north we're going to call this direction. Yeah. Um, so they go on the west where they're not really supposed to be doing pickup drop off in a parking lot that is not associated with the school but is where they do it. Um, bus activity generally happens north of this location. Just on that, I mean, obviously we should be touching base with Peter Cross and we have. former public schools with Julio verifying turns with the school buses at these when we're necking out uh, curbs, except for the, for the bus turns and the trash vehicles. Just verify that. Okay. okay. Before you, so. very excited about these projects and thank you for all the hard work which you are doing. So my comments are like tiny, tiny, tiny little, little things, okay? Sure. So, uh, because stuff which you can very quickly adjust and talk to your CAD operator, okay? And your writer papers and whoever did the survey. So see the street, that thing is a, so you should familiarize yourself with our, as our record plans. That's a 50 foot roadway. So the right of way is 50. Okay. So normally 50 foot roadways, we have two 10 foot sidewalks, not nine feet, eight inches, and nine feet, seven inches. Okay? Sure. So, so yep. if you're a survey person to familiarize with city standards. So you've got two 10 foot sidewalks and a 30 foot roadway. Make sure that this stuff reflects that, otherwise it looks a little bit weird. Sure. Uh, getting back to Highland and Marcella Street. So you have a 23 foot opening and I believe that has been discussed and all good stuff. The other one that shows 22.7 feet. So mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult for us to put an 8.4 inch, uh, you know, we mm -hmm. can't do that thing. So make sure that you have an understanding between your survey team, mm -hmm. you sir, your survey yes. team, and the person who is doing the drafting. So when this stuff needs to be built, I'm not chasing down 
0.7. Understood, okay, yes. So these are just tiny drafting errors mm -hmm. that you just need to pick up. But Some of these irregular dimensions on the existing condition where we're setting the curve in its location. So uh, if it's 9 feet 8 inches today, it's going to be 9 feet. So it can be any, uh, it can be adjusted mm -hmm. during pre pre constructions, okay? Because if you have to rebuild the sidewalks, you just need to push it. Yeah, I think for right. Marcella specifically, the, the street widens that, out. That are showing yeah. 22.3 and 22.7 and all the funky stuff. Sure, yep. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? So sometimes those who are not familiar with our systems uh, have shown us right of ways that are a little bit funky. The, the speed comes. So in terms of a 20 miles per hour travel zone which you are hoping for, what is the travel time time between speed humps? What are you aiming for? You said it's about 250 feet, but in terms of me experiencing that? Right. No, no, I, I know that. I just wanted to make sure that you all have given that consideration because that translates to a little bit more than 10 seconds of travel time mm -hmm. by the time you go through. And so that's a good Yes. Understood, yeah. Uh, we did not calculate that. And one of the reasons is uh, because the location of the speed humps also needs to be adjusted to, to make but sure that. those things need to work with each other. Sure. Yes. The placement of a speed hump is not mm -hmm. only the distance, but it is to what is the induced uh, speed which you want to travel. Okay. So that's why you discovered that the earlier ones were too far away because you are now again getting a bit of speed. So Don't put them more than 10 seconds apart because otherwise you're just going to lose it again. They're just going to write fast. Thank you. Do you want if to I may. To center I, Street? The improvement proposed on Center Street at Highland Avenue, um, it's going to get confusing, we have Highland Avenue and have Highland Street, um, uh, is a location where MBTA uh, bus, buses stop, so we have a bus stop on either side of the intersection. This was also a location documented um, where we have uh, frequent crosses, um, 28 cross, cross, crossings were documented across Center Street, um, and it's also down the street from the Page Academy. Um, an area with, with pupils, so it's a high interest area uh, for safety. Um, no other marked crosswalk exists between Cedar Street and um, uh, John, Elliott John Elliott Square. So th this, this was the reason to propose a mid-block crossing um, across uh, Cedar. And the, the reason for not a mid block, it's at the intersection. It's just in between the two existing signalized intersections with crosswalks. Right. There yeah. aren't any yeah. others. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, again, say the street is going downhill. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, come up the street's profile is downhill. Mm -hmm. So, when you are introducing this mid block crosswalk over there, have you given consideration to whether six feet is enough for a person to find refuge within that area? Um, that was the minimum space required to have an ADA refuge and also maintain uh, ac accessible uh, lanes, at least 15 foot lanes for emergency vehicles to pass by this location. So the, 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 the choice to, to make it a minimum dimension for, for the island um, was to try to balance uh, pedestrian crosswalk and uh, emergency access through. Okay, because it is a downwind slope and during snow conditions and a variety of conditions. And uh, just give it another second thought, mm -hmm. and because pedestrian refuge areas shouldn't be the minimum conditions. Okay, you're okay. All right. So just, just balance those needs so mm -hmm. that when a pedestrian, because you, there's a possibility that the pedestrian might stop within the median area. Yes. Correct. With oncoming traffic, right? Right. Okay. So, just the slope. As long as you can oh. get back to us, it is acceptable versus minimum standards that sure. will be comfortable. Okay. We will revisit the width of, of that. I'm sure it is okay, okay, but just sure. give it that thought. I'm sure there will be no design plan, but just some sort of vertical device on the beginning and ends of the, of the island, the just so that 
given the reflection, the right signage, and mm -hmm. exactly. okay, so of the right colors, all of that stuff. And again, with the pedestal. So you give it some thought because these are new elements which we are trying to put in for improving pedestrian safety. And that is the key part here, try to slow things down. And uh, our, our solutions could, should not create secondary challenges. Yes, agreed. Um, additional details um, related to the proposed improvements include the widening of the sidewalk along um, Highland Avenue by six feet to narrow down um, Highland Avenue to 18 feet. And I have to note that the dimension on the plans that you're looking at right now is incorrect. That will be updated before the next middle. Okay, but uh, but the, the curb return, you have a, you got two straight curbs. Correct. Uh, the, you want to design curbs like that? No, I know you don't. The, we'll, we will revisit that. <coughs> Yes. Is that comment already been made? The curbs for the driveway should just come out yeah, and no, be a natural. Right now, it seems like you don't have any curvature of that. It, we it, don't. It's dead into a driveway, so one side of the driveway will be up here, one side will be down there, um, and the, eight, the, the balance will be taken up in the apron of the driveway. So that it's just about pulling the curbstone of that one driveway out. That'll be the terminus of the bump out, and then everything else is going to follow the bottom of the driveway apron back to the other one. There are some about street sweepers that needs to yeah. agree. Yeah. And then uh, again, I'm not sure whether Highland comes downhill because I, I just don't remember mm -hmm. exactly what the profiles are, how water and everything is going to gather. Yes, that. yes that, that is definitely a consideration. And one of the uh, considerations that led us to this design was the presence of a water gate um, in an area that precludes us from creating more curvature. Um, so we can look at Tiny more details. Ticks. Yes, okay, you, you've done ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of the stuff. It's just Thank you. Um, right. Any other questions I can address? Second street median, which you are proposing on center. Yes. That, yes. That the second location, it, it's um, the median here is to control and maintain the, the citywide speed limit of twenty-five miles an hour. Um, observations in the field. Um, identified people driving across the double yellow uh, and accelerating up the hill. Um, this island is not uh, supposed to, and, and we would not propose a pedestrian cross, crossing here because we cannot um, accommodate what is the what is the three, feet, three, three, three feet. Three feet. So uh, is a three foot median of any type easy consistent with design principles? It's That's uh, question one. Question two. You are trying to keep the distance from walking through, mm -hmm. right? So the odd person who decides to walk through, now they are going to position themselves on a three-foot strip. Okay. So these are the things which you need to give consideration. Mm -hmm. We um, looked at a wider median here. We don't want. But I don't think you have room, right? <laughs> well, we no. If we want to maintain at least 16 feet for the travel lane. Um, on each side of it, which was the direction that we were given as the minimum. Um, we can't make it much wider. We also had some sight distance concerns yeah, yeah, because of the hill. Um, and so, you know, we're trying to work within down and, and around at the same yeah. time. Yeah, and at the so, same time, because it is down and yeah. round, because you are marrying both vertical curves and horizontal Correct. curves, there's more room for a vehicle yeah. to misbehave. Pedestrian yeah, we've considered a crosswalk, but there is not sufficient no, sight distance. So yes. That would be even more right. awkward. Correct. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we've gone away from that uh, decision. So and then these are just little thoughts. You sort it out. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Guys, have a treatment that precludes people from being able to see. Exactly. With the little bulbs. You know. Yeah. Correct. Just yes. Yes. Cobbles. Square. Yeah. Cobbles. Square. Yeah, concrete. Corner. Yeah. We just discourage. Like, we yeah. It will not look. Yeah comfortable to stand on. And we will illustrate it as such just to, to note that, that that area is not a, a walkable or desirable so area. Here's for a little, I don't know the answer, I think I know. So whenever you put a vertical device, you have to put appropriate signage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now three feet might not be enough even just to support a sign. So just give, give some thought to that part. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we will revisit the width of the, yeah. the remaining lanes so, and the width so of the island. Median, no humans, but it is still an obstruction. Right. 
okay, coming downhill, all of that yes. good stuff. Because sometimes when snow falls, it can very easily override the height of the medians. Okay, so right. when the car comes down, it's not going to see it. Is Understood. that another curve up there that would get us another six inches on top? It would require Some, something. But it would be so yeah. you, you can engineer it, you just need to think through that. Um, I also have to point out at the request of Public Works, we're replacing a badly damaged sidewalk section. It's about 25 feet long um, on the, the east side of Center Street. Um, right now it is a driveway, but it doesn't serve a, a property. There's no structure on the property right now. Okay, lastly, um, and this, again, it's a, a theme along Center Street to provide a, a similar um, speed profile for, for people uh, crossing this, this corridor. Um, at Center Street and Linwood Street, there is a very wide opening which creates a lot of confusion for people using this intersection. It also creates a, a crosswalk that's in excess of 65 feet for, uh, for people crossing Linwood Street. So the, we're proposing to ex extend Center Street uh, by about 40 feet south. Um, and close the, the gap. Um, this would include building a new sidewalk, directional ramps on both sides of the intersection, um, and narrowing down the, the opening to roughly 32 feet. Um. Stephanie, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I took a look at this situation and just trying to figure out who is going to shovel all of that snow within that area, because normally it is the property owner, and now the property owner may mm -hmm. not be keen on it. What this may, what this area may end up happening is we public works they shovel the snow over there, so uh, I couldn't think through how to create less of a place where snow will actually pick. But do we have any planters or anything that can be put as part of our projects? So no, yes. no, because uh, finding maintenance for those uh, is also a challenge. Yeah. Um, but we are proposing, you know, continuing the brick um, along. Uh, Center Street, and then introducing another permeable yeah. pavers that are slightly a different, you it's know, a look. Excellent so. solution for what's being done. Yeah. Uh, because that little. Yeah, I mean, as someone who's walked in the neighborhood when it snowed, I I, I feel that concern, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I, okay, the, nice, nicely done. yeah. We can, yeah, we can yeah. definitely look at enlarging some of these areas and narrow down the yeah. sidewalk burden. Don't worry, John's gonna shovel everything. That's right, John. Oh, Jesus. All right. Oh, yes. Additional duties. I think we're actually assigning maintenance to Pat Hoey these days. Perfect. Yeah. He's closer to retirement. He has a date in mind. Just give him something to do. That's fine. Nicely done. Very Thank you. nice. Okay. Appreciate it. I think that is the final improvement for this uh, neighborhood. Do you have, sorry, uh, set this straight because most of the drama, I think, when we were working in this neighborhood. It's a speed on center street also. Do we have an understanding as to what the current speed profile is? I do. Uh, I yes, do, we do. Actually. No, Okay, don't tell me. Okay. 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 Yeah. And uh, we are hopeful that we can bring it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a cut through, there's a cut through element that is the most challenging and because this street is going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the vertical profile is such we can't it's difficult to slow that traffic down. Right. Yeah, so, that's where the um, the medians. Yeah, the medians are hopeful um, that will help so with that. So there are other ways of yeah. managing the median situation by scored areas. So mm -hmm. okay, so that that's the part which you need to think <coughs> because that the median per the way we are defining it is a six-inch reveal obstruction that can get covered and then the cars back on it and sure. it becomes problematic and it's not wide enough to put any type of silent versus just the like in the near northeastern university, you know, Columbus Street where we just mm -hmm. score the score. Yes. Okay. okay. So think outside the box to give the vehicles some sort of a like be on this side, be on this side. Understood. Okay? Yep. Thank you so much. Just a minor question on the street. The I apologize for covering this. The double curve the double curve that you have that's sort of framing the permeable papers. Why the that is a solution to maintain um, grades. Got it. 
so, so the yes, they are actually because Linwood is, is has a very steep, steep profile itself, um, and we're trying to maintain a less than or one and a half percent for the, the crosswalk. And presumably, the permal papers we're using here, I mean, I understand it, but it's similar to the permal papers we're going to have on our license. It's a standard. It's a standard. It's a very old neighborhood where I think we have a standard. So 50 foot road race, 40 foot road race. So it is 50s, it is 210, 730, it is 40s, 27, 726. So just let your survey. survey person, not just blindly have a brief survey, let them understand what the record plans are. Mm -hmm. The curves could have moved over the last 15, 80 years. This is the thought construction this fall? Spring. Spring, probably. Spring. Mm -hmm. We have somewhat of a uh, construction management plan involved in this. Mm -hmm. Quick. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Anything else you guys want to come? We're good. See you guys on September 12th. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye.